I'm Anza, and um, I started, uh, well, my parents always gardened, and I hated it, because they, you know, if we fought, if we were bad, we had to go out and weed, you know, I was like, I am never, but all six of us kids got into, you know, in a way, and I think it's the food, we just like fresh, delicious food, so we kept going, but I was a social worker in Seattle for a long time, and then I started working with immigrants and refugees, helping them grow their foods in our climate. And we built uh, community gardens and micro farms in public housing. So I got inspired by how much they could do in a small area. And this, you know, what you can do in just a small, it's, you know, you just stay on it. You know, you're working on your soil, you put something in, as soon as it's done, you put something else in, you know, you're always, always going. So don't feel like you gotta go big. Always, I'd say, start small. And, you know, we did, you know, we started with just this section and then we did sort of that section and then we sort of pushed over to that section. But we were never focused on making money. <laughs> this is just a passion. So uh, we got a, uh, a NRCS, a, res a conservation, not National Resource Conservation Services, yeah, a grant to build that. So we got about $5,000 and then we had wood to build the ends. So that that's fun. I mean, you'll see, it's really fun. It's <laughs> what was the experience of buying? Yeah, so we, we heard about it through Conservation District and just, um, went online and got the application and it was really quick and really easy. What I don't get on these hoop houses, I mean, it's wonderful because you don't mind working in the rain and you know, look, it's still going. The tomatoes are sort of still ripening, but the soil is so, it never rains in a hoop house. So you've always got to be paying attention to your soil and the microorganisms are not going crazy in here. What you have not seen, and I'm glad, <laughs> is our managing of irrigation, it's just really hard to manage irrigation. We have these drip systems and soak systems and they, the mice come and eat a hole in them or they crack. So you're always having to repair them. And, you're, and, and when, you, when you turn on the system and then you decide to turn one of them off, it backs up and pushes another one to, it's just, I don't have the irrigation thing down and I, I, I should go on these tours to see who does. Who does? Yeah. Well, you know, there's a lot, a lot of people are drawn to kind of the organic nature of your, your farm. Rambly thing. You know, it's just kind of fun. It's not yeah. linear and yeah. rigid and everything. But there are certain advantages to that. It does mm -hmm. make it easier to water things. Yeah. And, yeah. You know, you know, it's always a trade-off. So here's our chicken coop. What a great chicken coop. What would you guys do differently if you were starting new? Um, maybe put in better fencing so that it doesn't have to be maintained so much. What would you do, Mark? I, I think that's good. I would think also have a little more of a plan about what we're going to do this year, and rather than having all of these things in front of us. So, so a little, little more plan, and that's how we go about it. 